Hi everyone, Eric Chappelle, Civil Community Evangelist for Autodesk, and I want to welcome you all today to our webcast, Advanced Transitions and Grading with Component Roads. Our, uh, our stars of the show today are going to be Nick Zeeban and Seth Hall, also from Autodesk. Uh, but before we get to, to those guys, I just want to talk to you a little bit about our webcast series and our community. If you're new to the series, uh, this is something we've been doing for quite a while now. We try to do it twice a month on the first and third Wednesdays. And the goal is for you folks to, to hear from our product team members. Um, a lot of times it's about new features or fairly new features. And uh, to give you a chance to hear about them uh, from the folks who developed them and maybe get, get some insight as to why they did what they did and what drives them and maybe even a little bit about how they work. And of course, uh, you also have the opportunity to ask questions, and I'll talk about the details of that a little bit later. But ultimately, the goal is just to bring you folks closer together with the, uh, the people making the software on this side. We haven't got our next webcast lined up yet. We do know the date and time. It'll be Wednesday, February 1st from 12 to 1. So same time, uh, same slot, first Wednesday of the month but uh, we're working on the topic as of right now. So keep watching those uh, bulleted items at the bottom there as far as where we're going to post information about how to register and get your seat reserved for those uh, for the next webcast. One, one thing we have the uh, benefit of, we've got lots of great presenters and lots of great topics internally, so I'm sure we will find, uh, find something for that, uh, for that date. A um, couple of polls. So this first one I'm going to launch is, what is your current usage level with InfraWorks 360? We'd like to know how you're using it, whether or, or if you're using it, in, in, uh, depending on what you pick, um, ranging from I don't even have it installed the whole way down to I use it on every project, couldn't live without it. <laughs> and uh, it's interesting to see some of the variation from one webcast to the next. Um, as as I kind of expected with the topic, we've got a lot of regular users on the webcast today because we're, we're digging kind of deep. And so that one right now is 35%. Uh, I regularly use it on some projects. Second place is 22%. I've dabbled on it on a few projects. And the remaining three are in the teens. So we've got a majority of regular users in, uh, in today's webcast. I'm going to close that poll and launch the next one. What type of work do you do with InfraWorks 360? Especially interested in the results in this one today, being that we have so many regular users. So if you wouldn't mind, take a minute to uh, provide your answer to that poll. And as of right now, we've got a pretty close tie between road design and visualizing projects. Uh, visualizing is about 72%. Road design is 67%, and by the way, there are multiple answers possible, so our percentages aren't going to add up to 100. Uh, third place is site design, so we've got visualizing, road design, and then site design. All right, I'll close that one down, and let's do the next one. Since we've got the attention of the uh, product team on the call, it'd be nice to hear from, from you what uh, area of the software you'd like to see developed road design, site design, residential, rail, or other. And uh, one thing I'd like you to do, if you do choose other, if you wouldn't mind typing in the questions box what your other is that you're thinking of, just to give our product team folks an idea of what's on your mind. Uh, so right now the results are coming in 68% site design, 46% road design, 34% residential, 16 rail, and 14 other. So. Uh, site design is uh, kind of the clear winner in that poll. So appreciate the feedback. That really um, really helps us out a lot and um, gives us an idea where your minds are as far as the development of the product. Um, just want to make everyone aware of our InfraWorks 360 community. You'll find it at autodesk.com slash InfraWorks 360 community. And it's kind of a central hub to lots of different resources that our user community will find uh, helpful and interesting and useful. Uh, and that includes the forum, the user forum, or discussion boards, as some of you call them. 
uh, idea station where you can post ideas on how you'd like to see the software improved. Infra tips are tips and tricks. Most of the time they're videos that uh, give you a little um, boost in productivity in using the software. Um, the gallery was uh, was overhauled a few months ago and has a lot more capability. It's a great place to show off any projects that you're working on or to take a look at projects that other people are working on to get some ideas about what's possible and what kinds of projects can you really excel at with uh, not only InfraWorks 360 but really all of our civil products. Uh, social Hub is a stream of the latest blog posts, social media posts, kind of what's trending in our civil infrastructure Autodesk space. And then uh, we've got videos, um, not, not only recordings of the webcast, but also other videos as well. And by the way, we've got our entire library captured uh, in, uh, as far as this webcast series from, I think, more than two years of webcasts now. So there's quite a collection going back uh, of, of lots of cool topics as they relate to InfraWorks 360 and Civil 3D. So be sure to definitely check those out. A little disclaimer, I don't know if we're going to get into any preview or labs features today, but just in case we do, um, you should know that any statements regarding preview or lab features are, um, are not a promise of anything to come in the future and that you shouldn't make purchasing decisions based on anything you hear there. So a um, little disclaimer there. And we want to encourage you to ask questions. Uh, as I mentioned, Nick and Seth are going to be our presenters today. Um, as one of them is presenting, the other will be answering questions. I'm going to do my best to help answer questions as well. And uh, questions just make the whole thing more interesting. So please uh, don't hold back. Ask your questions. And at times, I may even interrupt Nick or Seth to, uh, to throw one of those out for everyone to hear. So uh, we'll also, if we have some time at the end, we'll take some questions as well. So please ask lots of questions. And with that, I am going to turn the floor over to Nick and Seth. All Nick, right. You can take and it away. Here. I think you're going to be first. Is that correct? That is correct. We're going to reverse alphabetical order today. Can you see my screen here? And Nick, if you're talking, I'm not getting your audio right now. Really? Uh, can you hear me now? Eric? Hello. Eric, can you hear me? Can they can hear you online? All right. People on the call can hear me. Eric cannot. I'm not sure why, but we will uh, we'll get on with the show. Um, so I guess first things first, um, almost all of the grading capability uh, that I'm going to talk about today uh, was brand new uh, and introduced for the uh, latest release of InfraWorks. So that became available for download uh, either through the Autodesk app or uh, your subscription account. Uh, I believe last Friday it went live. So um, if you haven't gone and downloaded that and installed it, uh, I encourage you to do so. Uh, otherwise, a lot of the things that we're going to talk about today just won't be there. Uh, so first, let's talk about access. So I've got uh, a couple roads. Me and Seth are working in uh, similar versions of the same model. He's got uh, some changes he's going to show in other parts. But um, So I'm just going to pick this road here uh, in the model and select it. Sorry. Just being a little slow today. There we go. So I've got it selected. Um, before I actually dive right into the grading, um, it, you'll notice that there's some annotation that comes up um, when I do that selection. So that's also new. Uh, we're showing stationing in this case for the horizontal alignment geometry. I don't know if Seth's going to talk about that a little more maybe, but uh, it is there now. So um, in order to get at um, the grading capabilities, uh, if you right click after that selection, you're going to want to go drill down and choose this show roadside grading facet uh, is what we call those here. Uh, at Autodesk. So um, you'll see the grading entry show up in the stack to the right. Um, and in order to access all of the new functionality and capabilities that we have, we're going to want to switch from a fixed width type of grading. So we're fixing how far out it's going to grade into fixed slope. So that's where we did um, all the work as you as engineers tend to want to work in fixed slopes. 
So uh, it's going to go up ahead and recompute uh, for that road. Uh, and now we have fixed slope grading available for the roadway. So uh, a couple of notes. Um, so uh, in the prior release to this, we changed things so that you could actually apply a material to grading on the left and right sides. You, that still holds true, um, and we can start to break it down into subregions or subareas, and I'll get into that in a minute. But um, what I would suggest is if you really want uh, to see or continue to see the aerial image there, um, at this top level, uh, don't assign a material. So once you get rid of the none material, uh, at the moment there's no way to get it back. Um, so I would leave material unassigned at this top level when you just have the whole road selected. Um, and then as you break down individual areas that you want to assign materials to, you can do that, but you'll leave the area behind um, in areas where you might want to still see it. Um, so I could adjust the grading slopes, and here if I'm working at this level, um, it will impact the entire road, uh, and any changes I make um, to the road, to the grading will affect the whole thing, because that's what I've got selected. So I'm just going to jump to a different area. Um, over here where I started to um, break up the grading a little bit. So I'll switch my road selection to this other one here. Um, and you can see in this case, I've got the whole road selected, but we get uh, the very material varies or various values uh, image and text here. So there are various materials. You can see, like I suggested earlier, uh, on the fill side, or sorry, the cut side of this road, um, I don't have any material assigned right now, but on the uh, fill side of the road, I have assigned a grass type material to the road. So let's take a look at um, some of the controls that we've introduced. So if I want to, say, adjust fill slopes or cut slopes for a given area or region, um, we do that by starting to select in the area we want to make those adjustments. So for example, um, perhaps along this side, the upside or the, the uh, cut side of the road, I want to adjust what's going on there. So for example, um, maybe I want to change the material to some kind of um, dirt style material. So here I've got a stone material. So I could go ahead and now I'm going to apply that again along that entire fill side uh, of the road because that's what I selected there. So it's going to go ahead and make that change for me. Now you can see we're no longer getting the stretched aerial uh, along that edge. I'll go back and pick that side again, and then we'll start to um, break up that side into some different um, grading. So I've got that side selected again. On the right-click menu here, I now have split grading as an option. So I will split that grading up, uh, and I can either select on screen or type a specific value. Um, so I'm going to say at station 210, I want a split, and then I'm going to come somewhere down to like around here, 240. We'll go 240, sorry. And put that in. So um, I now have broken that grading up into some separate areas that I can control the grading individually on. So here, let me just clear my selection. So now I have an individual um, chunk or piece of grading here that I can now individually control. So the controls are always the same. You're always going to get material, cut slope, fill slope. Um, and then within that, you can adjust it for the given selection. So you can see I have this region selected. You can see it's 34.586 meters long right now. Um, if I wanted to adjust, this is a cut slope, so let me go in and tweak the fill slope, so I'll say uh, 6 to 1 maybe, and it's going to go ahead and apply that update. Now, a couple things um, you'll notice, so if I zoom way in, you can see for one right now, we go with a hard transition um, from 3 to 1 here to 6 to 1 here. So the way um, that we handle those is we have what we call a transition that we can add. So I'll select that grading region again. If I right click on the, uh, the gizmo there, 
you can see add transition is an option. So if I go ahead and add that transition, I can control the distance over how long I want that transition to take place. Five meters is the minimum. Um, so we just say, I'm just going to go, okay, over five meters, I want to transition from three to one slope to six to one slope. And it will go ahead and update and make that change for me. So now I have um, that transition control. Um, you'll notice if I come back in and select again, um, it allows me, uh, I could adjust either the transition or the grading itself. Um, and I can uh, change or update that transition length. So it would be the same thing over here on the right side. I won't um, spend the time to do it because it will take um, probably a little bit of time to refresh the, uh, the uh, display, but uh, I can make that same change. So there's one more thing um, I want to mention while we're looking at this view. So when I switch to 6 to 1, I don't know if it's super evident to everybody looking or paying attention, but along the back here, you can see there's sort of a vertical face um, that's been formed. And the reason is, if we go back to just the road selection, um, we have a setting in the grading control that's called grading limit. And you can see here it's set to 5 meters. So um, this setting has a, can have a, a potentially big impact on responsiveness of how long grading is going to take to compute. So right now, in my case, it's set to five meters. What that means is we're going to go out at whatever slope specifies, but we're going to stop automatically at a five meter limit. Now, so in the case of the three to one slope here on the left, let me just move along a bit. So here in this three to one area, I didn't hit that five meter limit, so it tied exactly to existing ground um, and made a three to one slope. Over on the right, at 6 to 1, I needed a little bit more um, terrain before I was going to hit the daylight tie. You can see, uh, if I pan over, looks like it maybe might have just caught, but there still looks like there's a bit of a vertical lift um, in that region. So I can increase that if I want to. Um, so I can, you know, in this case, I'll double it. Um, and that will get rid of that vertical face for me. Um, but what you sort of want to avoid is, you know, setting it to an abnormally large value, because what you'll see is the performance uh, of the grading computations will actually decrease quite a bit um, there. So a couple of people are asking you about vertical walls, in the correct wall type situation. Yeah. yeah, so I'll switch over here to the other side uh, of the roadway. So um, retaining wall type scenario. So um, I guess to Eric's comment, we do, um, we would like to in the future do some work around specific um, retaining wall details, um, looking at different types of walls, cast in place versus um, block wall, things like that. Um, but for the moment, uh, I, over here this would be a, a fill slope. So if I select this area um, and we decided that you know this was going to be a steep face, um, I could just take a really steep slope um, and apply it. So you can't go true vertical, um, same rules apply, sort of across civil engineering design software um, or terrain slopes. Uh, but I can put in a really steep slope there. You can see that um, point 0.1 um, is what I picked there. I could have picked something else. Um, now if we're going to represent retaining wall, um, then we're going to want to apply a different material, right? So if this is, you know, I don't know what type of retaining wall people are using, but let me and my dialog box a little, and uh, no concrete. Where is the oh, bridge has some concrete? I can see it for sure. There we go. So if I was using perhaps here's an MFE block pattern, right? So in the bridge library we have MFE block as a as a material. So now I could apply that MFE block style to that you know nearly vertical wall um, that I'm using to represent. Uh, retaining wall. Looks like there's a, some scaling issue um, going on in play there. I need to play with that a bit more. Um, same thing in this case. Um, I have a transition already applied over this area. So if I wanted to alter that transition, I could change 
uh, its location um, so that we're transitioning a little bit differently. So I could move that, you know, somewhere here uh, where we transition to uh, the steep grading section. Just wait for that to finish. There we go. So now we can see we're transitioning over that whole length. Um, and, you know, I probably didn't need to in this case. But uh, So those, those are, uh, um, I think, the, the grading controls. Um, they are per road right now. So each individual road, you will need to go in um, and break down the grading um, as you uh, see fit for a particular road design. Um, you can, uh, at the entire road level, as we discussed earlier, change those values as well. So if I just wanted to, again, apply material across the whole road and some cut and fill slopes for the whole road, I could do that as well um, at this upper selection. Um, if you made a mistake, uh, decided something that you thought you needed, you didn't need anymore, for example, this region here where I've got a um, 5 to 1 fill slope specified, if I decided that was extraneous, it's simply a matter of selecting it and deleting that grading area, um, and it'll return to um, whatever was uh, beside it. So now I'll have um, this area or zone um, has gotten bigger, uh, and I have three to one cotton and fill slopes uh, with the material that was applied to that area applied across the whole thing. There. So I still do have that transition area that was between the prior grading and the one I deleted, uh, so we maintain those. Uh, I think that was most of the topics uh, that I wanted, or all of the topics that I wanted to cover. So uh, I guess I can hand over presenter duties to Seth, and he can talk about it. And I'll jump on the questions panel and see if there's anything else that I want to talk about at the end, maybe. So I will make Seth a presenter. All right, can you see my screen on your end? Yep, we're seeing you. Good to go? Yep. Okay. All right, uh, my name is Seth Hall. I do QA for uh, Component Roads and Model Builder. Um, today we will be talking about um, transitions and component roads. Um, I'm going to walk you through uh, what you see here is a little uh, you know, lookout point on this road in um, Yellowstone National Park, um, doing a little trickery with uh, some um, stock components um, by changing the uh, slopes and the materials. So first thing I want to talk about, though, is um, what we do in the background with, um, hold on a second, I can't reach my bookmarks, there we go, uh, with component matching. So. We, during an edit operation or an insert operation, we walk through the road and verify if a component can match with itself. So only, com only a certain component can match with itself. So a lane can match with a lane, a shoulder can match with a shoulder, or a sidewalk can match with a sidewalk. Um, only components that have transitions can do that matching, so like a curb or a Jersey barrier, uh, stuff like that, you know, it doesn't matter because they don't have a transition. So just to visualize that, I have a little two-lane road here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select that. Bear with me, my remote it into another machine and it's a little slow. So um, try to get everything on screen. Okay. So as you can see here, we have a lane, a lane, a lane and a sidewalk. So um, even though it looks like a lane, it's a sidewalk. So if we go ahead and turn on these transitions, so that these are matched, you can see that they maintain that width um, all the way to the end of the component. So if we go in here, It, it didn't match, so this is a sidewalk that's a lane, so they don't they don't match up. So um, 
there's no, there can be no transition between the two. So to further visualize that, I can go ahead and change the width of this lane to something like 15 meters, just to visualize. So we have, um, you can see the transition can be controlled from this point out. Um, so yeah, component matching. So when you're when you're trying to design your roads and and use uh, the transitions, you got you have to have matched components in order to uh, to get the results you're looking for. So based on that, um, I also wanted to touch on um, using stock components for other purposes. So you see, I see a lot of questions in the forums and sandbox and stuff where people want to use different components for different purposes by changing the width, the slope, uh, the material to get what they desire. So that's all well and good. Uh, there's just some uh, side effects that you may see if you, um, if you go down that route. So uh, one thing is super elevation. So components that super elevate are lanes and shoulders. So I would stray away from using a lane or a shoulder in a different purpose because if you have super elevation on, it's going to super elevate, um, and it, things could get weird on uh, on your road. Um, so, and the other the other thing is intersections. Um, the way intersections are calculated, um, depending on where you place a component in the in your assembly. Uh, you could get some um, kind of like a curb return in the middle of a road, um, and there's all kinds of other scenarios you can get yourself into. Um, so, just a uh, you know uh, disclaimer there. Uh, what I'm going to show you, I'm going to do a little bit of that, but it's going to be in a certain section of the road, so I'm not going to have any intersections or uh, uh, or super elevation necessarily in my example here. So, um, going back to so what I'm going to do is, is this type of scenario here with uh, you know, a turning lane um, with this, this lookout type area here. So uh, let's go back to my demo road. All right, so I have the same assembly here. And I have, uh, so it's just the median. A lane on either side and a shoulder uh, with uh, a different um, material applied. So I'm going to start by splitting this oops, by splitting this median, which is going to turn into our uh, area where we can cross traffic and turn into our turnaround, our uh, lookout point. So I just split that component. I'm going to leave that there for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag back this to about here. So don't, don't get worried about what your road's going to look at. You've got to think about how it's going to build out once you get your components in there. So um, what I want to do is I want to add a uh, transition to this um, median. And I'm going to give these points uh, a round value here so it's easier for me to get exact matching up. So I'll put that at 110. Put this at 127. OK. So there I have my taper set for the median. I'm going to go ahead and I like to use sidewalk components for this because, again, they don't super elevate, um, and you have control of slope and uh, width to do what you need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and place a sidewalk component right here. So now I'm going to manipulate this to fit into this piece that maintains the width of this entire road. So I'm going to go ahead and move this back to 110. I'll move this to 127. And I know the width of this overall median is 4 meters, so I am going to change that to 2. 
And I'm going to get rid of this transition here. And I'm just going to leave the material alone for now. And for this side of the road, I'm going to go ahead and insert another sidewalk component. Again, move this to 110. One twenty seven. And change the width to two. So the benefit of that, this is a depressed median. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this on my screen or not, but you can see the the center line of, of that median um, is gonna meet up nicely with this. When you add a tra uh, transition to a median, it'll taper the vertical and horizontal. So it'll go up to a point, um, and these sidewalks that are set to zero slope will match that nicely. So I can go back and drill back into these. And for this one, I would I want the pavement to match the pavement. So if I was going to do this a lot, you know, typically I would create um, a custom assembly by only using one component. I'd have like a sidewalk with a um, lane material uh, on it and save that so I could just insert that and not have to do this every single time. Uh, same with uh, this one. I would typically create one called Green Space and use it in all sorts of uh, different applications. Uh, you know, green space between sidewalks and stuff like that. Um, but there we got the um, turning lane um, set in right there. So we still have this uh, broken component right here in the middle. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll just change the slope to make that flat. And I'll change the material to match the roadway. So we got that. That should all match up on elevations um, from this, the end of this median, uh, the end of this turning lane, which is actually a sidewalk. Should be no gaps in the roadway. Um, so we could go ahead and if we wanted a turn lane going this way, say we had a, you know, a secondary road here or a, you know, an intersection without an intersection, basically. Um, we could go ahead and do the same method over here or um, since this is still a depressed median, what we'd have to do, is, I don't know if you guys can see that on screen, but there's a gap right there um, where the depressed median, since this doesn't have a transition, um, go into there. So what I'll, I'll go ahead and do is I'll split this again, and I will turn on transitions. And I will flatten that out. And I will turn on the transition for this. So what that will give us is a nice smooth um, transition vertically from this depressed median to a flat median to the roadway. So that is basically that, a quick and and dirty example of how you can manipulate your components to uh, show what you want. Um, I, I've seen some customers, you know, they're far more creative than me um, and can come up with uh, pretty interesting uh, scenarios. Uh, again, um, this isn't recommended to use these sidewalks throughout the roadway, uh, in, especially around the median and stuff that can cause issues with uh, intersections. Um, but super elevation should be unaffected because unless you wanted the uh, that crossing or the uh, turn lane to super elevate, because um, it, it won't super elevate at that point. So um, another example, um, I'm going to start this one from scratch. I don't have a, a ready model here, but um, we can do a similar thing transitioning uh, curb and gutters. Uh, so. Bear with me a second. I didn't think I'd have enough time, but I do, so I might as well go through it. 
Any questions that are? Uh, a few questions about NCAP conditions, so not currently possible. Yeah, no, no, no bull noses or radiuses around the, the median at this point. Um, but this is a, we get a, seem to get a lot of questions around this type of stuff. So, uh, yeah. So here we have uh, you know curb and gutter, uh, you know like a driveway cutout type of scenario. Um, you can split this. Again, it's a curve, so you don't have transitions here. Um, but you can go ahead and replace this. Look again, I'll use a sidewalk. So we want to match the slope for the curb. So we have I mean the gutter, sorry, gutter slope, which is negative negative six. So and what was the width? So I'm going to match the width of 0.45 and the gutter slope of negative six. So, so 0.45 and six. And again, go ahead and switch the uh, um, switch the material to match the curb. I don't know what off the top of my head or I, I don't want to be digging around the style picker while we're on here, but you can get it to match up pretty well, although that doesn't look like it matched for some reason. Did I go the wrong way? Yes, I did. Yeah. So as you can see, you can match. Um, again, you're going to get these these open ends of the curbs, but um, by manipulating, say, if you had a uh, again with a green space uh, type sidewalk here and then a sidewalk up here, you could match the slopes um, coming off this gutter up there with minimal um, gaps on that uh, that curb end. So um, I, you know, I'm not going to walk through it all all right now, but because um, a lot of trial and error with figuring out the proper slopes to match those, um, but uh, you can you can create a lot of different scenarios with uh, using the basics that I've outlined here. So um, I think that's all I had. If anybody's got any questions or want to see anything different, I'll take a stab at it. So there's a question about um, volumes. Um, okay. During grading, so I'll just pop on real quick and. If anything else comes yeah. up, you can um, maybe go to that. But uh, let me just, can you guys, can you see, you see my screen? Yep. Okay. So um, uh, in order to get volumes, um, we, you simply need to select the road um, that you're interested in querying volumes on. So I've got this road picked. Uh, down here in the, the bottom left of the um, stack, I get the uh, volume controls. So I'll hit the compute button uh, and it'll go ahead and compute them. Um, and I get raw numbers, cut fill for the whole road. I'm getting some graphics flickering. I'm not sure quite why, but um, for the whole road. So you can see um, this one's pretty extreme in the cut um, value. Uh, if I wanted to, um, I could bring up uh, the detail values. So you can see here, I can see the overall cut fill uh, and net cut. Um, if I wanted to, for some particular reason, limit the station range, I can flip the toggle here and then tell it what start and end station I want to limit the range to. Um, also, uh, if you want to look in a little more detail, um, we can generate a CSV file uh, and just put that on my desktop. Um, and CSV, there it is. Uh, so I then get uh, a average end area report for my volumes uh, in CSV format. So um, you could then manipulate that value or, or put it into uh, a fancier or nicer report form um, there as well. So that's the, the uh, current set uh, of capabilities uh, around 
volume reporting. Uh, it, it is, like I say, per road um, currently. Um, a couple um, settings are available. Um, so uh, what increment is it computing on? So right now it is doing average end area computations. Uh, so you can set how often it's doing those. Um, and then we have sample at key station. So key station um, are things like where a widening or change happens. So on the grading side where we change grading slopes, um, we would add an additional sample station where we switch from cut to fill. Um, in the case of Seth's design here, we looked at where this um, widening um, uh, overlook, scenic overlook parking pullout is. Um, we would add additional samples to make sure that we're getting um, proper data there. Um, and then just to whether or not we include intersection areas, roundabouts, bridges, because um, obviously there's additional um, uh, volumetric data available there. Uh, so that was the, I think those were the only ones um, that I saw uh, that sort of needed an additional or demo of anything. Oh, Seth, if there's anything you see there that you want to talk about? Yeah, I, there's one question from Juan asking to show the, I don't know exactly what you're trying to say there, but I'd be happy to try whatever. You want to retype it in there? Con contours? Contours. Okay. That was, can we do that? Uh, yeah, so right now, um, the only way I can show contours in the product at the moment is by leveraging uh, something like the right-of-way element. Uh, so I could draw a right-of-way um, around a particular area um, and, and draw. Uh, and then I can turn on uh, the contours for that area. So now you can see there are uh, they're a little faded. I probably need to adjust um, some styles and things. Um, but you can see uh, the contours drawing over the roadway uh, there. So you, you need a right-of-way, an easement, or a parcel um, to have that contour option to turn on right at the moment. Um, that's one way to get there. Uh, I see a question about cut fill, uh, or it is from the datum surface of the road. So it's going underneath the components, uh, not including the components in those cut fill, fill values. Uh, Cody's asking for the whole road. Um, I assume contours for the whole road. Um, so yes, um, the, probably the fastest way to do that. Um, if you pick the whole road and say add right of way, we'll actually uh, computer right of way that should encompass the bounds of the whole road, you could then turn on the contours for um, that one. And that's based on the road type, right? It's based on the road type as far as how far we offset. So for a local road, I think we go uh, like, I can't even remember, 10 or 15 feet. Um, and then like for a highway, I think we go like up to 50 or 100 feet um, to try and encompass the road. And we do also do bump outs around intersections to make sure we include the intersection areas in that. Uh, so that would be the, the ways to uh, do that. Uh, can you control right of way width? Yes. Um, so when I create one, I mean, I'll do it on this road here. Um, so let me add a right of way. Uh, there we go. So there I added a right of way. Um, now if I pick uh, pick it. Um, if I pick an individual segment in the right of way, um, then I get the offset value. Uh, oh. oh, I need to. Huh. Oh, sorry. I gotta do it by the mid. Strange. I'll have to think about that. I'll follow up on that one because I was fairly certain I had an I could edit uh, by offset. But perhaps me and the team have had a discussion about editing by offset, but it might not be might not be built yet. <laughs> 
that happens too. Uh, Hey, Nick, just a couple of things I wanted to mention um, about the latest release and some of the things you talked about that are included in the latest release. One was the um, cut and fill by station range, so that's brand new. And yep. I don't know if anyone picked up on it, but when you went into the volume settings, there's an option now to include intersections, cul-de-sacs, and bridges in the quantity. So that's also a new capability in this latest release. And then some of the editing that you just did with the right-of-way, um, we've greatly improved the, the editing for right-of-ways, parcels, and, uh, and easements. So that's, that's new as well. So if, if any of you are current customers and you haven't gone out and downloaded the latest version, make sure you do that because um, there's, some, there's some really important improvements in there. Yeah, absolutely. As is um, the new annotation during edit, uh, for roadways. So as I transition here from uh, a top-down view and we switch from having the horizontal controls out to switching to have the vertical uh, or profile controls out, um, you'll now see all of the, the uh, annotation also dynamically updates uh, to give you a little more feedback in Canvas about what you have um, selected. So uh, more detail there and continuing enhancements to come. Uh, I've seen a couple of questions. The cup fill volumes are all datum surface, so they all go underneath the roadway. They don't include um, any of the curb, any of the sidewalk, any of those. Um, so it goes underneath any of the 3D elements to get you um, datum cup fill volumes. And before somebody asks, um, we don't currently support uh, stripping on top of that. So um, it is on our list of things to do um, to allow you to set a strip depth also. Nick, there was one that came up earlier about whether the split grading is available for only component roads. So can you use it on design roads or, or just component roads? Uh, so it works on design and component roads. Um, you, can, you can adjust those grading properties. Um, I would encourage anybody who's not um, already leveraging the capabilities of component roads to really start to get in there, um, as that's, that's really where you're going to see uh, the bulk of the new capabilities around roads is going to be leveraging components. Um, so, so you know, some of what Seth showed, um, how you can manipulate those, how you can make them do uh, different things is going to be a, a key skill, I think, going forward. Um, but yes, the, the grading options are there um, on the design roads um, also, if you desired. All right, great. I think uh, I think the flow of questions has uh, has died down a bit. So um, if you guys don't have anything else you'd like to cover, I can uh, I'd like to take back screen control just for a second. And um, anything else you, you guys want to cover? No, nope, I think I'm good. All right. That. I'm going to switch back to me, and um, I just want to remind everybody. Uh, about our next webcast. Once we figure out what the topic's going to be, which should be very soon, uh, we're going to be uh, right back here on February 1st from 12 to 1. Um, so we hope to see you all back here. We just talked a good bit about uh, the latest release, and I wanted to remind everyone that you can go back to the community site and view the recording from the webcast two weeks ago, where Sarah Cunningham talked about all the details of the latest release. So if you want a review of that, or if you missed it, you want to go back and check it out, um, definitely do that. And there's going to be more information coming um, about this latest release in, uh, and the new features that are contained in it. So stay tuned to all the different um, streams of information that are out there regarding uh, InfraWorks 360 and our other, uh, other civil products. I want to uh, thank Nick and Seth for being our presenters today. Awesome job. It's always great to hear from you guys directly because we know you're right there in the thick of it. Um, so thanks, and uh, I want to thank everyone for attending, giving us a little bit of your time today. And I hope you found it useful and valuable. And um, this session was recorded and will be posted shortly. So if you want to go back and review anything, or if you had a friend that missed it, you can share the link with them. Um, you'll be receiving a follow-up email from GoToWebinar that will have the link to the recorded 
uh, videos in it as well. So thanks again, and everyone have a great day, and enjoy the rest of your week.